In this video, we're going to look at a type of bond called ionic bonds and how it can lead to the formation of an ionic compound. So ionic bonding is when anions and cations are held together by opposite charges. A positive charge formed when an atom loses electrons and a negative charge formed when the other atom gains the electrons. Ionic compounds are also called salts. So if you think of salt, you probably are thinking of table salt. That's a great example of an ionic compound. It has a metal um, that gains a positive charge, sodium with a plus one charge, and then it has a nonmetal, chlorine, that gains a negative charge when it gains electrons from the sodium. So positive sodium, negative chlorine, that is table salt. The simplest ratios of elements in an ionic compound is called the formula unit. So when you think of something like table salt, sodium chloride, you say NaCl, but in reality there's lots of sodiums and lots of chlorines. The smallest ratio of elements that come together to make this salt would be one to one, one sodium for every one chlorine. That's why we say NaCl. But in reality, it could be hundreds or thousands of sodiums and chlorines. So the bond that's formed in an ionic bond is formed through the transfer of electrons, the loss and gain of electrons. The metal's always losing electrons and the nonmetal is always going to gain the electrons. They're transferred this way, electrons are transferred in these reactions to achieve a noble gas configuration always. So ionic bonds um, lead to compounds that are also called salts and they're made from cations with an anion or literally a metal, something from the left hand side of the table with a non-metal, something from the right hand side of the table. So in this example here we have sodium and chlorine. So sodium has one valence electron, chlorine has seven valence electrons. So sodium being a metal it's going to lose its one electron from its outer level and chlorine being a nonmetal, it's going to gain one electron to fill its outer level. And it would look something like this. So there's sodium's valence electron. Chlorine has a free spot and it's going to take up that uh, electron. Now sodium has no valence electrons. It'll achieve a, a plus one charge and it'll be a cation. And chlorine will achieve a minus one charge as an anion. These opposite charges are what's going to hold them together in this ionic bond. It's the strength of those different charges which physically connects these, these ions together like little magnets. So let's do an example by combining calcium and phosphorus. Remember, all the electrons must be accounted for and each atom has to have a noble gas configuration when we are done with the bond or else it's not stable and it won't form in that way. So here's calcium, it has two valence electrons, and phosphorus has five. So calcium is a metal, so it's going to lose its valence electrons to phosphorus, which is a uh, nonmetal. So by losing two electrons, calcium is now happy. It has a noble gas configuration, a complete outer shell, and a two plus charge. Phosphorus, however, is not happy. It doesn't have a complete octet, so it won't work in a one to one ratio like sodium and chlorine will. So we might need another calcium. So if I bring in another calcium and it loses one valence electron to phosphorus, this phosphorus is now happy. It's gained three electrons, has a three minus charge, and it's now stable, has a noble gas configuration. But our other calcium isn't. It still has one valence electron and it's not uh, a noble gas configuration. So we'd have to bring in another phosphorus. So calcium will lose its valence electron, it'll be happy, but now this phosphorus isn't happy. So we need to bring in yet another calcium. So these two valence electrons will leave calcium. Now this calcium's happy, it has a noble gas configuration and a two plus charge, and so is this phosphorus. So the lowest whole number ratio that will work in this, in this scenario here is three calciums for every two phosphoruses. Um, so then we need to name it. So whenever you name an ionic compound, we'll talk more about this in later chapters, but you name the metal, it's just the calcium, and then you name the non-metal with its ion ending, its i ending. So this would be calcium phosphide. So Ca3P2, that's a chemical formula, and it shows the kinds and the numbers of atoms in the smallest representative particle of the substance. It tells us that calcium is there and phosphorus is there and that the smallest whole number ratio that will come together and work for this ionic bond to be made is a three to two ratio of three calciums for every two phosphides. 
So for an ionic compound, the smallest representative particle, which is what we've shown here, is called a formula unit. It's not a molecule, it's not an atom, it's, it's a formula unit. It's a whole term that most of you guys probably haven't heard in, in other science classes or in everyday speech. Everyone knows what a molecule is. But a formula unit is something that we use just for ionic compounds. It's the smallest whole number ratio of all the elements in an ionic bond or an ionic compound. So let's summarize here. Ionic bonds are formed when electrons are transferred from a metal to a nonmetal. The electrons are transferred to achieve a stable noble gas configuration. And the opposite charges created from this transfer is what holds the cation and anion together. The smallest represented particle of an ionic compound is called a formula unit. You are going to need to be able to determine the formula units of ionic compounds. Um, in the video that you just saw, um, there was a lot of electrons moving and going from one place to another. Now you can do that, it's not impossible, but it gets pretty annoying like with our calcium phosphide example. There was a lot of uh, thought that had to go into where the electrons were coming from and where they're going to. In the next video I'm going to show you a little trick, a little trick that will allow you to get these formula units with a little less effort. So I hope this made sense and tune in for the next video and I'll show you how to do this.